Hi, this is episode one of our new series where you can learn everything there is to know about the Microsoft SharePoint framework. Let's dive straight in. So whether you develop on a Mac or Windows, whether you just write in plain JavaScript or you use a framework like React or Vue, this series will give you everything you need to confidently put Microsoft SharePoint Developer on your CV. As I'm going to be releasing new episodes every week, I'll encourage you to click subscribe and the notification icon so you don't miss out when I release a new episode. So this episode is just a brief introduction to the Microsoft SharePoint framework, but stick around and uh, I'll tell you about the web parts that we're going to be developing during this series. So at the end of this episode, I'll give you a little insight into what's coming in future episodes. So what is the Microsoft SharePoint framework, which is sometimes known as SPFX? Well, it's Microsoft's best practice for developing client-side solutions for SharePoint and Teams. It allows you to safely work with SharePoint data, such as lists and profiles and things like this. And it gives you a safe environment to develop in, knowing that the web parts you develop will be accepted by Microsoft when they're deployed. So with the SharePoint framework, you can develop web parts which are naturally mobile friendly. You don't have to worry about the layout or anything like that. You can use modern development tools such as Visual Studio Code, uh, Cursor, uh, using frameworks such as React, for example. And you can even build extensions to SharePoint, although currently these are being reviewed by Microsoft. More on that down the line. So what I'd like to do now is give you 10 top reasons why you should develop for the Microsoft SharePoint framework. Number one, the web parts you develop using the Microsoft SharePoint framework can be used not only just in modern SharePoint, but classic mode as well. Although hopefully you're moving off that in 2025. The SharePoint framework or SPFX is built upon JavaScript. So uh, it's integrated into the environment. No need for things like iframes and horrible little implementations like that. Number three, it allows integration with APIs, but there's some really powerful internal APIs as well, like the Graph API for profile data, Active Directory and things like that, and the List API for reading and writing and, and doing all sorts with lists. The fourth point is SharePoint is actually supported online, as you'd expect, but there is on-premise support in 2016 and 2019 for a different version of the SharePoint framework. In this series, I'm going to concentrate on SharePoint online, but it's good to know. The fifth really good point is the web parts you develop are naturally responsive. It's built into the framework. So as the user resizes the page, you don't have to worry about layout and columns and things like that. The sixth really cool point is it integrates with frameworks, JavaScript frameworks that you already use. Now, primarily I'm going to be using React.js because it seems to like that one. Uh, but you can, if you wanted, use Vue, uh, Knockout, uh, Angular, whatever your preference, you can actually use that with a SharePoint framework. As I said, in this series, we'll be concentrating primarily on React.js. The seventh really cool point about uh, the SharePoint framework is it's built on modern technologies. So for instance, we use things like TypeScript uh, so that it's uh, a nice safe code that you're creating and well formatted and future proofed. Uh, we use things like Gulp for running scripts, Webpack, Yeoman, uh, Node.js, all these tools you can reuse when you're developing for the Microsoft SharePoint framework. Number eight, and this is probably my favorite point, is that actually SharePoint is built using the Microsoft SharePoint framework. So when you're developing in it, you're confident that all the libraries and everything will work because Microsoft SharePoint relies upon them. Number nine, deployment of your web parts is so easy using the app catalog. So you don't have to worry about this really hard deployment scenario as if you were deploying to an app store like Apple or Android. It's a simple upload and deploy. And my 10th point is that it is an in-demand skill. By sticking Microsoft SharePoint developer on your resume, it's sure to help out with your career. And hey, I said 10, let's say 11. Here's a bonus point and that's security. 
when you're working in the SharePoint framework, you can't do anything that kind of accesses the back end of SharePoint like you could in the old on-premise days when we developed in .NET and C Sharp. Everything runs within the context of the current user. So you're limited in what you can uh, destroy uh, as it comes to data or uh, to the site that is hosting the web part. It's a really nice, clean model. So the bottom line around security is that it's a safe, low-risk environment to develop for. So what are we going to be building? Well, we're going to be building two web parts initially. There's the welcome web part, which is a way to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on uh, where you are in the day. And we're also going to create an FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions web part, which is going to read from a list and display those in a nice accordion style. It will show things like basic web part functionality, properties, themes, dark and light. And as we go through each week, I'm going to release the source code for where we are, and you'll find that in a link below. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how to set up your development environment and give a little explanation of what each of the tools in the tool chain are. And it doesn't matter if you're on a Windows or Mac, I'll show you how to do it on both of those. And as the series continues, we'll flesh out our web parts, we'll build them, we'll package them, and we'll upload them to the app catalog so all your users can use your wonderful new web parts. So in conclusion, I've been working as a SharePoint developer for over 20 years now. <laughs> I've seen it from its earliest development through to .NET, through to the client-side model we use today. I'm not getting any younger, so I'd like to share what I've learned. Here on Robert's Dev Talk, we're releasing new episodes every week, so make sure you subscribe. I'm really pleased you've decided to join me on this journey. I'll see you next time.